What is up you guys? I find linear regression a very fascinating tool to see into the future in a linear way. Linear regression is a rather ubiquitous curve fitting and statistical technique used almost everywhere from scientific research teams to biological systems or even in stock market analysis. Some people, including myself, love to look at linear regression as an interpolation method because that's what it is. Linear regression finds application in many fields, such as forecasting in weather data analysis, equalization in communication systems, performance evaluation in automobiles. Linear regression is also used in astronomy to investigate cosmic distance scale. It is really worth noting that linear regression is a statistical tool utilized in different fields such as signal processing, machine learning, anatomy, stock analysis, forecasting, and many, many more. In this animated lecture, we'll talk about what linear regression is, a possible formulation to attack or solve the linear regression problem, along with computational complexity problems and solutions. So say I've got a bunch of data that I want to analyze, right? And the data, they lie on a straight line as such. But that's not always the case, right? In many data collection procedures or sampling or even measuring, you've got some noise where the data is subject to, right? And as you can see, the more noise I've got, they tend to look like spurious points in two dimensions, right? So for simplicity, we're going to assume that we're talking about a simple linear regression model in this lecture. So we're going to collect all the data points I have as such into two matrices. Actually, the X is a matrix and the Y is a vector. Now, the X matrix contains all the features, right? The samples or the instances in each row of X and the features in the columns, right? Whereas Y contains their corresponding targets. Say we've got M features and we stack them as such. Well, one way of solving or approaching the linear regression problem is by minimizing the difference between the term x theta and y, right? In other words, we're trying to find the best theta that minimizes the noise on the measurements, right? And another way of seeing this cost is that it is the sum of squared residuals, right? So you're summing up the residuals and then taking the square of each residual. Well, the solution of this problem in matrix form is nothing other than what you see in front of you. It's X transpose X inverse multiplied by X transpose Y, right? As simple as that. So fortunately here, we've got a closed form solution to find the best theta. That is to find the best line that fits the data. And as you can see over here, the white lines that you see are the residuals that we talked about. And turns out that the theta that you see in front of you, which generates the blue line, is the line that minimizes those white distances, right? Unfortunately, this term has an inverse. And with increasing number of features, this inverse becomes very hard to compute. Simply just generate a matrix of size million by million, right? So that's in case you've got a million features and compute the inverse of X transpose X or simply a matrix of size million by million. It will take you a lot of time, right? And if it doesn't, well, <laughs> I'll buy the computer or the machine that computed the inverse in a fast way from you. <laughs> Let's say we're using a normal computer. We find that the computation of this inverse is slow. Well, are there any alternatives to solve this problem? Well, yes. And it's by performing 
gradient descent. We talked about this in one of my animated lectures and one of my lectures on machine learning using scikit-learn and TensorFlow on Python. This method iteratively minimizes a cost function j of theta, which in our case is nothing other than the sum of squared residuals, namely you take the sum of the white lines that we showed you and you try to find the best theta that minimizes the sum of squares of the white lines, right? Well, in matrix form, it is the cost function, j of theta, that minimizes least squares, right? Well, since we need the gradient of this function of j of theta, then we have to compute it and as you can see it is the difference between x theta and y post multiplied by x transpose then you take a scaling factor of 2 over m the 2 comes from the square and the m is the number of samples right well then we just you know replace the nabla of j of theta or the gradient of j of theta in the expression of gradient descent and we get this iterative procedure that we have. Let's see how this performs on some data, right? So ideally, I'd want to hit the blue line, right? As fast as possible. Well, say that I start as such, then gradient descent tries to twist or rotate the line so that it approaches the blue line given a suitable learning rate, right? If you're in a hurry, you try to, you know, increase the learning rate eta. So you'd end up really close to the blue line with something around, I don't know, maybe 10 iterations. And then you're almost there, right? As we talked about in the previous lecture, we don't want the learning rate to be too high because you might end up diverging as such, right? So the learning rate is a really sensible parameter that needs to be adjusted with care. Perfect. Now you know two ways of performing linear regression. One using the normal equations that involves matrix inversion and the other using gradient descent. Now the question is, how do you predict, right? Well, given some new arriving samples, all you have to do is evaluate them on the linear curve for the straight line and simple linear regression. And you say that this point on the line is what I predict, my Y hat, right? Because linear regression using the MSE cost reduces the residual errors, right? And that's it. So this video is dedicated to people who want to start with linear regression with no background whatsoever. And even if you have some background, you might find something in this video for you. If you found this video beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, share it on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and stumble upon and other social platforms. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Do not feel shy about your question. I do not judge any type of question or comment or critique if you have. Trust me, it really makes me happy that I see that this channel is growing through comments, likes, and subscriptions. 
The best part about my day is really reading through your comments, responding to your comments, whether they're on YouTube or even mentions on Twitter. I've had a lot of Twitter mentions that I'm sharing and acknowledging on Twitter itself and Facebook through my Facebook stories. And I'll see you in future lectures.